This video is 3.2 cell parts part one. There were so many cell parts, we couldn't fit them all into one part, and so we needed to divide it into two. Let's do it. And so the first thing we gotta talk about are called organelles. Organelles are specialized structures inside the cells that perform special functions, you know, like lysosomes and mitochondria and all those things that perform special functions inside of a cell. Prokaryotic cells don't have much of this. They have like ribosomes. And that's pretty much it. All right. Um, eukaryotic cells have lots of membrane bound organelles that we're going to spend most of our time talking about. Cytoplasm. It's not really an organelle, it's more like a place. All right. So the cytoplasm is everything inside the cell that is not the nucleus. And so uh, the way I like to describe this to my class is like once you come in my, the door, of my classroom, you're in my classroom. What is in what is my classroom encompass? What's well, all the seats and tables and all the things, right? You're not talking about like the space inside there. You're talking about everything inside there. It's all part of my classroom. And so the cytoplasm is like that. It's like the space inside the nucleus or inside the cell that's not the nucleus, right? Now the liquid portion of that cytoplasm is called the cytosol. And so that sometimes gets confused. But just think of cytoplasm as anything that's inside the cell that's not the nucleus. And when I say the word cytoplasm, I'm just talking about the general area outside the nucleus. And so I think that's an important distinction. Speaking of nucleus, here we go. Nucleus. Nucleus has lots of things. This is the control center of the cell, which is really ambiguous. It's about as bad as another ambiguous definition that I'll get to in 3.3. Um, I don't really, I like it. It's okay, as long as you understand why. Why is it the control center of the cell? This is because this is where the DNA is found. DNA codes for proteins, and uh, proteins do a whole lot of cellular functions. And so this is how this is how the cell controls things, as well as all these different proteins doing their job. And so nucleus is the control center of the cell. A couple other things to talk about with the nucleus. First is the nuclear envelope or the nuclear envelope. As my dog is walking around back behind me, the nuclear envelope is the uh, membrane around the nucleus that separates the nucleus from the rest of the cell again protects the, the dna and everything that's in the nucleus from the cytoplasm cytoplasm is a dangerous place got to be careful out there nuclear pores you do have to get in and out of the nucleus and this is how they do it nuclear pores allow the transport of materials in and out of the nucleus then there is the nucleolus or the nucleolus or however you pronounce it this is this dense area inside the nucleus and it is the site of ribosome synthesis. There's other things going on there, but for our purposes, we're just going to say that. And when we say ribosome synthesis, what do we mean? This is where ribosomes are made, right? Be ready to see that word synthesis, though. It's a good science word. You need to know it. And also, look on here. There's chromatin. They're on the right-hand side. We got a little bit more on chromatin. We're going to talk about it in this slide here. Chromatin is this material inside the nucleus that is essentially made up of DNA and proteins. I like to think of it as like a bowl of spaghetti, right? And this bowl of spaghetti is looks disorganized. Actual bowls of spaghetti are disorganized, but chromatin's not really disorganized. It's just all in there. Now, when the cell gets ready to divide, it divide, it needs to organize all that DNA. And so it spools up the DNA on those little proteins that are in there. They have names. You don't need to know them. And basically condenses. Think of it as like taking a bunch of yarn and wrapping it around a spool, right? You're condensing that yarn into a more manageable unit. That more manageable unit inside the nucleus is called a chromosome. And so a good sentence to remember, have in your notes, is that con chromatin condenses into chromosomes during cell division. And uh, we'll talk more about cell division in 3.5, but that's just a good way to think about that. Chromatin, chromosomes, both DNA and proteins, but it just depends on what cell or what stage the cell is in is when you're going to find those things. Next is the ribosomes. Ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis. I didn't talk about this in class, where what ribosomes are made out of. Ribosomes are made out of RNA and proteins. Not necessary for my class. I just thought I'd mention it. Uh, because they're kind of like little cellular particles. They're not really, they don't have a membrane, you know, like some of the other more famous um, organelles. They don't have a membrane around them. But so you find ribosomes in prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells alike because all those cells need to make proteins and ribosomes will be doing that job. 
protein synthesis. So now we're going to look at this kind of big group of things called the endomembrane system, which I will define and get to later, kind of talk about all the constituent parts before we actually get to the, uh, the system itself. Uh, endoplasmic reticulum um, had a good definition today on the board as I was going over this stuff. So let me think of that. That definition of endoplasmic reticulum is it's kind of involved in the production and transport of cellular components and other materials for the cells or for the cell itself or outside of the cell. And so some things that are made in the ER are, or ER or endoplasmic reticulum, those two things are interchangeable, are going to be shipped out of the cell. So there are two different kinds of endoplasmic reticulum. You can kind of see it on this picture. Um, and so you can, or you can zoom in if you need to do that. But the, the smooth ER I'll talk about first is called smooth because it doesn't have any ribosomes on it. It's a, it's a smooth structure and as far as we're concerned the the only thing the smooth ER is doing is membrane lipid synthesis membrane lipids are just phospholipids this is where they're made and cellular detoxification any kinds of toxins that get into the cell they're going to be metabolized by this uh, smooth ER the rough ER the reason it's called rough is because it's coated with ribosomes what are ribosomes doing they're making proteins and so the rough ER is directly related to that proteins that are made with these ribosomes are going to enter into the transport out of the cell. Uh, other ribosomes make proteins, but those proteins usually stay in the cell. Proteins that are made on the rough ER are going to be leaving the cell. Before they leave the cell, they've got to go see somebody. That somebody is the Golgi apparatus. I've seen it called Golgi complex, Golgi body, and Golgi apparatus. Those may be three separate things. I'm sure a cell biologist could set me straight. But as far as I'm concerned, they're all the same. And so um, Golgi is a word that I would just, I just call it the Golgi, but Golgi apparatus is fine if you want to write out the whole thing. The big thing for Golgi is that this is where uh, proteins are modified. The way I like to think about this is like if you're shipping something, put it in a box, right? And that box has a name. We're going to get to that in a second. You put it in a box and you ship it. You don't just ship it anywhere. You have to modify that box. Right, you modify the box with an address, a stamp, and all that kind of stuff, and it gets to the right place. So the, the example I like to use is the parathyroid, which makes a hormone called PTH. PTH affects calcium levels in the body. Where's calcium controlled? It's in the bones. And so that hormone has to talk to the bones. Well, why, doesn't the other, why don't the other things talk to the PTH? Why don't muscles and blood cells and all the other things, when they see it, they don't recognize it, right? It's been modified such that the bones recognize it and take it up, and it causes the bones to do something different. And so that, that modification that's in the Golgi causes the cells to recognize those proteins or those, yeah, those proteins. All right, and so lastly, let's talk about the endomembrane system. That's basically all of this stuff together, all right? So the way I like to think about this is this is a system to get the proteins out of the cell. If I was to ask you, for instance, uh, demonstrate how proteins are, are, you know, the path of a protein from creation to leaving the cell, it's in this endomembrane system, right? On the rough ER, the protein's made. That protein is going to be packaged up and sent to the Golgi. The thing that it's packaged in, what I haven't told you yet, is something called a vesicle. It's like a temporary little storage bubble. You can kind of see it here in the middle of this picture, the little blue circle, and down on the a lower side, that transport vesicle. You don't need to know the different kinds of vesicles. You just need to know the word vesicle. And again, it's protecting that protein. Cytoplasm is a dangerous place, so you got to protect it. So it protects that against the cytoplasm. And then that little bubble kind of joins with the Golgi, and it's uh, modified in the Golgi apparatus, and then it gets into another vesicle, and then it will go from that vesicle to the plasma membrane to leave the cell. And so these proteins that are made on the rough ER, they're going to be leaving the cell, and the way that they leave the cell is via this endomembrane system.